Hi everybody, Adam here. Welcome back to our Lego room. In today's Lego room update video, we've got a lot of stuff to cover. We just recently got back from Brickworld Chicago and had an amazing time. Lots of cool stuff to talk about and we'll also go through our haul from Brickworld Chicago. Lots of cool things that we were able to pick up. We've also been receiving a number of really exciting Lego orders, so we'll talk a bit about those as well. And we'll cover some of the upcoming projects and things that I'm looking to tackle here in the Lego room. So let's dive in and get started. So first off, talking a little bit about Brickworld Chicago. What an amazing convention. It was over 100,000 square feet of builds on display. Uh, so many awesome builds. You've seen some of the videos up on the channel already, and we've got a lot more videos to come from the convention. Uh, really amazing stuff to see and super inspiring as well. And, you know, also a great opportunity to meet up with other builders, chat, see some of the, the vendors that come to Chicago for the convention, and, you know, also a chance to go to local vendors. I always make sure to head to the Brickmania Chicago store when I'm at the convention. Had a really awesome time there. So, you know, overall, really amazing time. Uh, it was an action-packed five days, I guess, of the convention. And then we had an extra day there where we went to the Museum of Science and Industry as well, which was really impressive. So super happy with all of that. And I, you know, as I mentioned, managed to come back with a number of exciting items from the, the trip as well. From the, the convention itself, I got the awesome convention kit, the Roaring Peacock. We'll be building this soon and we'll talk about it on the channel, but really impressive looking build. Love how distinct it is. You know, it's a very unique looking build. Uh, some great colors in there. And I think it's gonna be a very eye-catching one too. I love the, love the peacock tail. So looking forward to building that. And one of the workshops that I always go to at Brick World Chicago is the GBC workshop. Picked up the latest GBC kit. Looking forward to building this. I've already got it partially assembled. So looking forward to finishing it off now that it is at home and I don't have to worry about trying to transport it uh, in my luggage. So this should be a great build and a great addition to our GBC modules that we have here in the Lego room. Also picked up this cool Ninjago kit. It was my uh, part of my package for the convention. We were able to pick up a, a sort of a prize set and I picked this one. I thought it looked really cool. Some great pieces in there. Should be a fun build, but you know, nice to have some awesome looking pieces as well that we can potentially repurpose for other builds. So really happy with that. We've got our Brick World 2023 engraved brick and our recognized AFOL networking event brick. Nice little uh, Lego 2K drive pin. It was in my goodie bag. Got a, a whatnot little bracelet wristband. Then from Brick Chest here, we've got a cool little sort of goodie pack with an awesome looking Octan pin there. Really like the look of that. A nice sword. Looks like we got a Brick Chest sticker and a Brickenstein sticker as well. I assume that that's a sticker, but awesome imagery on there a lego frankenstein we picked up this awesome minifigure as well really like the prints on that that was in the the goodie bag as well really nice looking parts there should be a great figure when it's done 
Nice brick world sticker. And then some cool looking foliage parts that we picked up as well. Really nice looking foliage parts. So looking forward to seeing what we can do with those. Really like the, the coloring on these leaves here. And you know, these, these smaller leaves should be quite nice as well. Will give us an opportunity to maybe do some fall fall trees or general sort of foliage, which should be nice. So really awesome stuff. And I've got a few more things here that I picked up while I was at the convention. So let's take a quick look at those. Next up, we've got some awesome items from Brickmania that I was able to pick up from their Chicago store. As I mentioned, it's always one of my stops when I'm at Brickworld. It's a great store to, to go and check out. And I was fortunate enough to be able to pick up two of their new store exclusives, the Gangster and the Lawman minifigure set there, and the U505 sub set which should be fun to build an awesome looking little micro scale set uh, so really happy to be able to get those two exclusives and you know beyond that managed to pick up one of their d-day minifigure packs the awesome looking australian m1a1 abrams battle tank love the coloring on that i think it should be an awesome build and then I also picked up a couple of their uh, space mission tile packs, which I'm a big fan of. And, you know, I make sure to always pick up any of those that they have released. So I was happy to happy to get those as well. So some cool stuff. We'll make sure to to cover finished builds uh, when they're done on the channel. But you know, was definitely happy to be able to check out the Chicago store for Brickmania and pick up some cool items. Another vendor that I was really happy to see at Brickworld Chicago was Brick Stuff. Always on the hunt for more lighting products for our city and our various builds around the, the Lego room. And they had some cool new stuff that I was excited to pick up. They've got these modern Lego street lamps, a four pack. So I picked up a couple of those. Not entirely sure which part of the city that I'm going to put these in yet, but interested to try them out and see how they look because they, they should be a really great addition, I think. I could see maybe using them around more of an industrial section of the, the layout. And I picked up one of their four-way intersection kits. Uh, should look really cool. We've got another one of their lighting uh, intersection kits. So want to start integrating those into the, the city part of the layout. And then I picked up a couple more of their torches and an awesome micro-rotating beacon light that I think will be... Not entirely sure what I'll put this one on, some different options around the city, but you know, I think that all of these are gonna be great additions and looking forward to, to adding some more varied lighting products into our city. I was also able to pick up some cool graffiti walls from Eclipse Graphics. Always a big fan of the work they do, and I think that these two graffiti walls will be interesting, eye-catching additions to our city. We'll see what build we integrate them into, but always a big fan of the, uh, the work that they do, and these graffiti walls in particular are always quite, uh, quite impressive and uh, very visually distinct and eye-catching. So always try to snap up their great graffiti walls anytime I can. So really happy with the look of these and they should be, like I said, a great addition to our city. 
I was also fortunate enough to be able to go to the Lego lighting talk at the convention by Brian Williams. And it was a great talk. It was really interesting to see some of the lighting examples from his book uh, at his table where he was displaying. And, you know, I was able to pick up a copy of his book, which also had the, the side benefit of then I was able to get him to autograph my copy of the book, which was a really nice, really nice benefit of seeing him there at the, the convention. Really happy with the book. We'll talk more about it in an upcoming video on the channel, but, you know, uh, lots of great subject matter in here. And I was fortunate to be able to, to go listen to his talk and, you know, as I mentioned, get him to uh, to sign my book. So quite happy with that. Now, as I mentioned, been receiving several Lego deliveries and I was really happy to be able to pick up the Lego Pac-Man set. I'm a huge video game fan. So this is an awesome set, not only to build, but to have on display in our Lego room. Uh, really excited to see how the mechanism works inside that they've put in there. And, you know, I think it'll be a great addition probably to have displayed by our Nintendo Mario build in the uh, our Lego office area where I do my my film, some of my filming and uh, various other work. So I think that that will be a great addition there. And then we also picked up this awesome Disney display set as well. Another one that I think is very, very impressive looking. And while it'll be fun to build, I think it's also going to be really cool to have as a display item. Not sure where specifically I'll display it yet, but uh, it will be a great addition to the, to the Lego room. One other set that I'm really looking forward to building and looking for a place to display it is the Ninjago City Markets. Really big fan of these Ninjago City builds. I think they're really amazing and looking forward to finding a place within our city, uh, either the main city or, you know, an a side part of the city where I can display all of these Ninjago City builds together. But really impressive stuff I think that they've done here and I really like the the concept of all of these uh, Ninjago City builds that can go nicely together. So looking forward to putting that together and you know like I said we'll be thinking about the best optimal way to display that within the within the Lego room as a whole, whether it's on the main table or whether it's in a side little area that we start building up with some additional uh, buildings like this. So next up, I wanted to cover some of the projects and various things that we're gonna be doing around the Lego room. And first up, probably, you know, one of the biggest things that we're gonna do in the short term is we're gonna finally tackle getting the, the city laid back out uh, in that section of the, the Lego room over there. And as part of that, we need to get our road system, both completed roads and you know base plates for future road builds laid back out. And we need to do a pass with all of our brick stuff lights to get all the wiring laid out throughout the entire city there. And as part of that, I want to start running lighting, uh, well, lighting, but electricity out through the, the track modules around the, the perimeter of the layout. The reason for that being one, lighting. Uh, I would like to do some lights in selective areas around the track. Uh, I would like to get to the point where we've got the the track signals and those are, are lit. I think that would be really cool. But I also want to have the, the wiring running out to the edge of the layout so that 
we can have our switches out there for turning the, the lights on and off. Uh, I think that's probably the best place. I could wire it to the middle as well for that, but uh, I think for the time being, I want to wire it to the outside. So multiple things there. You know, Obviously, we want to get the, the layout of all the buildings set back out there. Want to keep up with the conversion of non-MILS uh, modulars over to MILS modules. Uh, we've got a number of buildings that we've got parts for that we want to get finished off or started and completed. Uh, so we'll be doing some of that. So lots of work ahead there and then all of the, the wiring and power related stuff as well. So excited about that portion of the, the work ahead. Uh, there's going to be a lot of things to figure out there, but I think there should be some interesting stuff along the way. And you know, in the end, it's going to look, uh, look amazing. So really, really excited about that. That's going to be a big chunk of work. Next up beyond that, I want to continue to uh, build out the, the train yard over here. Uh, we've talked about the crossover that we want to put in this section of the, the main line track. And I'd really like to get some additional track both here uh, connected to the main line so that we can run trains off and on the main off of the main line and back onto the main line. That'll let us uh, add some additional trains to the layout here and have different ones that we can easily run uh, without having to move them too far. As part of that, I really want to be able to empty this shelf out here. So this has become kind of the catch-all between this area here and some of the train cars down there uh, for all of our Lego trains that aren't on the layout. And we moved everything up here when we went uh, through the process of converting the, the main line over to mills. But now that we've got all the main line on mills modules. I really want to get back to the point where all of these trains are either on sidings or around the, the main layout, or maybe in some cases we'll have some secondary track underneath the main table where we can set these up. But I really want to clear out this shelf because I've got a number of things that I want to build and display here. Uh, so I want to, you know, really sort of uh, push ahead on clearing this out and getting these trains all accessible generally from the main line or the main layout. And then we can, you know, start filling this in, which will allow us to not only get some things built that we've been waiting to build, uh, which will be nice to have on display, but we'll also free up some other space for us around the, the Lego room as we continue to to do some of these projects and you know sort of work our way around the room of tidying things up. A couple of other projects that we want to undertake around the the layout. I've got some things I want to do with the the grain elevator before our next train show. So I'll be uh, starting on that soon and we'll talk about that in an upcoming video. But along the lines of the grain elevator, I want to push ahead with a number of the other, I wouldn't call them modular buildings per se, but the let's call them industry and support buildings around the layout. We've got a number of instruction sets and bricks and mills modules ready to go for that, which will allow us to uh, not only add some interesting three some th interesting things down this section of the, the layout here, but it'll also give us a few additional modules to pull from for upcoming train shows. So excited about that and kind of extending forward from there. I've got some plans to add to our Mills, uh, call it like Mills 2.0 for the layout. I want to add a lot more sort of uh, accessories around the layout. So whether it be signals, trees and landscaping, uh, train support buildings that don't really qualify as like full fledged buildings. You know, they're not like a grain elevator or a hotel, but, 
you know, water towers uh, and things like that. Want to add a whole category of builds like that around the layout to add more, uh, more life to the layout. Uh, happy with the way things are progressing, but that's the next sort of level of uh, set dressing around the layout, which will, I think, really add a lot to the overall look. So we'll talk more about that in upcoming videos, but I want to do a bunch of work around that, both for the layout and so that we can take them to, to train shows as well. I think that will look cool there. So a number of things on that front. And then in order to support all of this, I want to do a bunch of work around sorting and kind of cleaning up our access to all of our Acro Mills containers and our general brick uh, storage. So there's a lot of sorting that we want to do, a lot of cleaning up and making sure that things are filed away that are down here into containers up above. Um, and generally just improve the accessibility for all the, the bricks that we have in our collection so that we can pull from them. You know, we want to do a bunch of train builds. We want to do a bunch of city builds and all these other builds, which are going to, you know, require bricks. And we've got a lot of those bricks already in the collection, and I just need to make sure that I can get to them easily. And, you know, when we don't have something in our collection, you know, make it easy to know that. And then, you know, I can go and order that off of BrickLink. So lots of work over here. We've been making progress, but I need to do a big push on sorting and making sure everything's labeled and, you know, sort of easily accessible. So all of these different things we will cover in upcoming videos uh, as we go through and do this work. And, you know, as part of that, you know, I just need to make sure in general that, you know, as much as I can, I clear out a lot of this floor space, both around the, the tables, under the tables, really try to maximize the accessibility of all the portions that we have or all the different sort of sub areas that we have around the the lego room so overall really excited about all of these projects lots of work ahead but i think it's going to pay off both in terms of the uh, the layout here and the general lego room uh, but also in terms of what we can take to upcoming train shows and, you know, I didn't explicitly mention it, but we've got a lot of actual train builds as well that we'll be doing uh, both from sort of new trains that we've got on deck to build. And I also want to go through and finish off the, the locomotive builds that we started a while ago that I know people are anxious to see completed. So we'll be pushing on those as well. Now, if you have not subscribed to the channel, please make sure to do so so that you don't miss out on any of those upcoming videos. And thank you very much for watching. We will see you again soon. Take care. Bye.